Hey you guys, this week is Thanksgiving and after that all of the holiday flood will come in. Now if you guys are getting ready for the holiday Christmas season, then creative and personalized stockings is what you want. Now what I'm going to be showing you guys is a quick and simple way to go ahead and uh, personalize this from your Cricut now and then if you guys want to take it a step further with using a sewing machine or if you guys aren't into sewing you can go ahead and use a hot gun to do that last part or either or so the font that I'm going to be using today is lovely day that font can be found on dafont.com d-a-f-o-n-t.com and you guys could go ahead and check it out because I just love the hearts that are on top of the eye. And Television, of course, is our brand, our logo, our name here in Tullyville. So the first thing that I will be doing um, now is just going ahead and throwing this into uh, like the Cricut Design Space uh, mat. Now, we went ahead and designed that. When you guys are using cursive, like if you guys do decide to use Lovely Day, just go ahead and do um, negative two letter space and all your letters will come closer and that will be all. So now that we are getting prepared to add this to our mat, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to my Cricut Air 2. And now that it is connected, it says to set the material. I'm gonna go ahead and load my vinyl. And I make sure that I use Iron On Plus or light cardstock with certain vinyls because they don't cut as deep. Once you guys get into the Cricut, you will know what vinyls work best for you and how to prepare them. But mine says Iron On Plus and I went ahead and sent it to the Cricut and this is how it looks. Now that it is all set up, I'm just going to let my Explore Air 2 Cricut cut it all out perfectly. It is a pretty fairly quick process. Once it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and weed around all of my letters, making sure that I don't lose anything like the dot on top of the eye, making sure that all of my letters stay, all of the small places and parts by the cursive letters, making sure that those stay um, as well because when you're doing script in cursive words, uh, it's a bit tougher to make sure that they stay. So even if your customers ask, if you guys did decide that this is something you wanna sell, um, just make sure that your fonts are readable if you're going to be using the Cricut. Now that that is weeded out, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and go ahead in, add it to my stocking. I was like a like a CD skipping or something. So I don't want to have to go ahead and throw this on a heat press for time's sake and just making sure you guys can see everything. So I'm just going to use my iron and I applied heavy pressure for about 10 to 15 seconds, moving it ever so often to make sure that it doesn't burn my fabric. Now it was a bit fluffier before this but I think that it's still fluffy enough if you guys use your easy press or your heat press it will not um, scorch it as much and once I let it cool down as I was peeling it was much easier to peel this was a cold peel vinyl and this is what it looks like I absolutely love it and if you guys want to stop there you can if you guys want to go to the next step let's go ahead now at this point I'm just going to go ahead and use this stocking that we got from Dollar Tree as a pattern. So the first thing that I want to do is grab my seam ripper from my daughter and go ahead and start ripping these seams apart. The best way that I found to do this actually was not with a seam ripper, but it was actually with some scissors. So you guys see me switch those two out. Now that we have this fully, or almost fully, now that we have this separated, I just I want you guys to know that we can still use this. Like, we're going to still use this. So, no need to buy fluff or fur fabric if you guys decide to use this method. You can go ahead and use the same one that you got from Dollar Tree. Or if you guys want to fluff it up more or, you know, just have a different cuff, that's fine. You guys could go ahead and uh, use this as a pattern as well. I'm going to go ahead and trace out my stocking on my frozen fabric. This is just an example, but my daughter actually loves to play with some of the stuff that I make sometimes. So hopefully she's running around the house with this stocking after the video. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold it right sides in. Um, and we're going to cut it as if we're cutting on the fold, but a little bit to the side of the fold. Oh, 
Okay. Now, Winter just wants to hang out with me as much as she possibly can today. And that's fine. But I'm going to see if Daddy can come and get her so we can go ahead and continue this video. So now, as I was saying to you guys, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that it is laying nice and flat and that the insides are in um, right sides together. And from here, I'm going to get it in place to be cut out. You guys can use scissors as you guys see me doing here. Um, but I'm going to start with scissors and head over to my rotatory, rot rotatory, rotary cutter afterwards. I like to cut out a close shape to it so that I can have more control as far as turning it around. Making it easy so I don't have to do one long cut. I can just go ahead and do a small cut there. Keep going. A small cut there. Keep going. That's just a little tip or a trick that I use. So moving quickly, I realized that I did not fully cut my stocking to shape because my cuff was too small. So the cuff part is the most important to make sure that those two line up so that you can bring them both back together. Now at this point, I see that everything matches and I'm going to get ready for the next step. So once we do take this to the sewing machine, I want you guys to know that we're going to do a nice line all the way around, a straight stitch, and we're also going to make sure that it is uh, about a half inch seam allowance, just like they did here on Dollar Tree. You see, it's a pretty thick seam allowance. So we need to do the same thing, half an inch seam allowance. Say bye, Winter. Okay, now, now that I have my stocking cut out, we're just going to go ahead and cut out that uh, stocking hanger. Um, that's going to be a nice little rectangle line. I did it double the width to make sure I can fold it in half to give it some strength. And let's head to the sewing machine. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pin around this ever so quickly. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it onto the sewing machine. Now you guys see me do a back stitch and I go all the way down. I go around my curve. I go through the back. And now we are at the heel of the stocking and all the way back up. No need to leave a hole or anything like that. It is ready. Now once I turned it inside out, I realized it wasn't laying as flat. So we're going to go inside and snip those little pleats away. Making sure that there is no fabric that is like sticking together or hanging onto each other to make it not lay well. So that's what it looks like once we have sewn it properly. Now we just got to figure out how to attach our cuff and our stocking hanger. Now this for me was a bit confusing. It seemed tricky. Um, but once I figured it out, it was pretty easy. Now I forgot to tell you guys to go ahead and sew that cuff hanger or the hanger uh, right sides together. And then once you sew it right sides together, we're going to fold it um, the way where the inside is out. And we are going to do two straight lines on the outside. Not only does this add like stability, but it gives it a nice flat look, kind of like a, a keychain or a lanyard. That method right there. Oh, you can make a lanyard like this. So many possibilities, endless possibilities. So we're going to go ahead and turn this inside out to add our cuff and to add our hanger. Now I realized that um, it's going to be when you're sewing this on, you should see the out, the inside of your stocking as well as the inside of your cuff. All right, you guys, so we are going to go ahead and add these two together and we're going to have the inside of the stocking touching the outside of the cuff. The inside of the stocking touching the outside of the cuff. So the television is touching the inside of the stocking that was confusing for me to get a grasp of but once I did I like just took it and ran with it now once we have those set up in that manner we're going to go ahead and add our stocking hanger the part that hangs the stocking onto the wall over the fireplace we're going to go ahead and add that onto our uh, our little sandwich it goes in the middle like the cream of an Oreo 
once you make sure that everything is aligned flat and evenly you can snug it right into that space and add a pin to that as well Now we're just going to sew a circle right around this, making sure that you sew at the crease that was already there from Dollar Tree or do a nice half inch seam allowance so that you have a beautiful fold over. I forgot again and did a one fourth seam allowance and I had to fold it a little bit more but the crease was still strong enough to make it work. So now that I am done sewing that circle all the way around, I'm going to turn my stocking right side out push out my curves and show you guys the finished product so this is what it looks like we're going to go ahead and do some magic and flip over our cuff and everything shall be revealed if you flip it over too much you will see that seam and that's why it's so important to have that fold there now that our fold is perfectly folded and so that would be a nice crease too if you guys don't have that nice fold as well but uh that is how it looks guys this is the completed look of the diy quick and easy custom stocking with the cricut and or exchange of fabric i'm just going to clean up all of my loose threads and that is it you guys so this is what it looks like I'll show you from the top to the bottom I actually really enjoy making this and once again I realized that the possibilities are endless if you guys enjoyed this please go ahead and leave a comment below uh, give us encouragement like this video guys when you like it the algorithm of YouTube says that we're great and they share us more and us as a YouTube family get paid more and it just helps just by you liking what you already like so thank you guys so much for like just being awesome and subscribing and and just being a part of our family this is the first one and this is the second one i really hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time bye